So we've been talking about faith. Uh, we talked about partial faith. Uh, partial faith, uh, is it even possible? Uh, we talked about partial obedience, you know, is that even obedience? No, it's not. We talked about the other side, how the enemy will oftentimes present a, a response to the Lord from the other side. And in our minds, in our feelings sometimes, it makes sense. It makes sense from the other side, but not from God's side, which is the only side, which is the side we want to be on. And today, I want to give you a picture. I want to give you an understanding. I'm, I'm one, I'm a visual learner. And so oftentimes, that, if you've been around here for any amount of time, it, it'll come out in a message because I want you to not just hear, I, I want you to not just get a concept, but I want you to be able to apply that concept to real life. And so faith is one of those things that sometimes is abstract to us, maybe more abstract than we even realize, because faith is not comfortable. So by the sheer nature of it, sometimes we push it off because it takes the controls out of our hands. But I want to give you some analogies of what faith is, but I, I want to give it with the understanding of caution. Caution is the, is the title of the message, Caution, Faith, and Progress. Caution, Faith, and Progress. And to give you some, some ideas, I want to give you a couple pictures of how I want you to think about faith. If you think of faith like an egg, if you think of faith as an egg and what faith does, sometimes you can't see what's going on, you can't we can't, we can't like go to an egg and, 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 and take it out of the nest and go, hey, I just want to see how it's developing. And so I'm just going to gently crack it open, and, and I'm just going to kind of peel it and just see, oh, yeah, everything looks great, and then put it back. What did we just do? We just killed it. Just killed it. Yeah, but I didn't mean to. I was just checking on it. I just, I just making sure everything's working, just making sure it's all, it's all good. Uh, it doesn't work that way. I remember living in Florida and you walk down the beach sometimes, and, and depending on the time of the year, sometimes you'll see these, uh, it's snow fence is what it is, and, and you know, they're not thinking snow here, but they're just keeping people out of this area, and it's a turtle nest. And the thing about a turtle nest, you don't mess with it. It is a federal offense to do anything. You don't walk up there and look at the fence and see what's going on. You definitely don't reach down and, hey, I'm just going to check on the eggs, just going to make, yeah, yeah, there's eggs in there, all right, put that back. Yeah, you can't do that. We would never, ever mess with that because we know you start messing with the nest, you start cracking things open, checking on progress, checking on it, you kill something, you kill it. Faith is, has a very similar dynamic. You put that seed in, you, you sow that seed, you don't just dig it up and keep checking on it. You don't dig it up and keep messing with it. You sow the seed, you leave it and let it do what only it was designed to do through God, through his power. I want to give you another picture here, and we'll, we'll talk about these. We'll keep visiting this. Is faith is a boat. Faith is a boat, just this little boat. And, and we're here, but we need to get there. We're here, and this expanse is so far over there. You can't go this way, can't go this way. But faith is a boat. It's the only thing that's going to get you where you need to be. It's the only thing that's going to get you over there. It's the only thing. That, that's it. There's no other way. Faith is a boat. So faith is an egg. Faith is a seed. Faith is a boat. These are things that we're going to be talking about and going, going forth today. I want to give you a scripture, and, and I have a long scripture here, but we're going, to, we're going to skip through real quick. Matthew 6, we're going to skip down to verse 10. This was a, a passage of scripture where Jesus was teaching them how to pray. We would know it as the Lord's Prayer but there's one specific statement I want to, to key in on here. He says in verse 10, Matthew 6, verse 10, he says, I have an underline, your kingdom come, this is how we're to pray, your will be done. I mean, that's key to faith. Your kingdom come, your will be done. When I say by faith, your will be done, I can't take it back, I can't check on it, I can't take hold of it. God, are you, are, are, you, are you treating it nicely? Lord, I left this situation, this, this circumstance, this concern in your hands. But no, I just want to, I want to look at it. I mean, if I ask for a show of hands, I mean, how many times we pray over a situation, we pray over a condition, we pray over some kind of provision that we need from God, and then we come back and <laughs> And, and worry over it. We come back and <laughs> just check it on it, Lord. I'm just going to crack the shell a little bit. Just, look at, just, just enough to check. I'm just making sure, Lord, that it's all good. Lord, I'm just going to... 
me throw a question out to you. Can we pray too much? Now, before you answer that, let's talk about it. Can we pray too much? Is there a line of praying where it crosses over into my will be done versus thy will be done? Is there a line that says, okay, God, I want, Lord, I want your will to be done, be done as long as I like it. God, I, I'm going to place this in your hands as long as you take care of it the way I think you need to take care of it. Is there a point where we lay it in God's hands and we just need to leave it and let it do what it was designed to do? I think there is. I think sometimes inadvertently we're going to God just like a little kid goes to their parents and keeps going to them and going, but, but what about, and this and that and this and that, and you finally go, it's because I said so? And you gotta leave it there? I think sometimes we continue to go to God and it's not praying thy will be done, it's praying my will be done. And God's not okay with that. Just like every parent's not okay with that. We need to look at this. Little Johnny, he, uh, he wanted a baby brother. And little Johnny, man, he really wanted this baby brother. And his parents, you know, they, they kind of had some insight on some things that Johnny didn't have. <laughs> and and uh, they hadn't really told him. They weren't really sure if he understood or what. And they said, well, have you prayed about it? Why don't you pray about a little brother? And the dad goes, I tell you what, why don't you pray for about two months? And I, I think in about two months, God will bless you with a little brother. And, uh, and, and Johnny was like, okay. And so he begins to pray. Well, dad and mom had some insight uh, to mom's condition, uh, more so than Johnny. And right, wrong, and different, they were like, you know, maybe this is an opportunity to help him in his faith and understand how prayer works. And so he, he, uh, he begins to pray. And every night they put him down, he, he prays, God, give me a baby brother. Amen. And, and for about a month he did that. And then he just kind of forgot about it like a kid. And, he, you know, he just went on. But, you know, uh, <laughs> the... Uh, the condition was already set, right? And, uh, and so that month he prayed, but the last month he didn't pray, didn't really think about it. And all of a sudden he goes and visits grandma and grandpa and he's staying with them and he comes home and mom and dad come home and mom and dad are carrying this little blanket and they go, hey, Johnny, we got something to show you. And they pull back the blanket. There's your new baby brother like that. He goes, oh, I forgot. I forgot about praying about my baby brother. And, and he goes, yeah, you prayed that month, but then you haven't prayed the last month. And he goes, oh, we got a baby brother. Aren't you glad I didn't pray the last month about it? We had two baby brothers. <laughs> so I like Johnny's faith. Uh, there's a couple in the church. Uh, I didn't see him this weekend. Um, she came up to me a couple weeks ago. Uh, their first child, he's a couple years old. Uh, I kept teasing her. I, I said, I think you have twins. Uh, triplets. I think you have triplets. We're just going to pray for that. You know, I was just messing with her. And she goes, we are not having triplets, and we're definitely not having twins. We're having one. And all So they had their baby. That was a couple years ago. So she comes up to me a couple weeks ago in the foyer, and, um, and she goes, hey. I thought I was going to have to call security. And, um, and so she, uh, she goes, hey, I need to talk to you. And I go, what? She goes, went to the doctor, and she says she sees two, like that. And so without missing a beat, I go, I go, oh, well, I'm sure the third one's hiding in there somewhere. And, <laughs> and, and uh, she goes, no, 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 we'll leave the church if that happens, like that. <laughs> and she came to me last week, and she goes, okay, there's just one. There's just one. <laughs> there's just one. And I go, I bet the other one's hiding. You know, and, you know, sometimes faith, uh, it takes on this, this understanding, this, this picture, this, this idea that when you put it in God's hands, uh, you know, sometimes we're, we're tempted to, to, to take it back. Um, I want to give you a couple aspects of faith. See, faith's a powerful thing. You got to remember that. Faith is a very powerful thing. There's two types of faith, two types of faith. Faith in the moment and mustard seed faith. Faith in the moment and mustard seed faith. See, faith in the moment is, oh God, help me, faith. I, about, uh, good grief, I, many years ago, I was 12, 13 years old, I uh, was riding three-wheelers with my cousin, his parents, and my aunt and uncle, farmers, and, and they had three-wheelers, and, and uh, we were driving way too fast. We were doing stuff we shouldn't be doing, uh, just, just zigzagging, follow the leader, and I cut a corner way too fast, and there was a really hard ditch bank, uh, probably uh, eight, ten feet deep, 
and I start sliding into it. And there was one lone tree that had not been cleaned out of this ditch bank, and it had a pretty good-sized limb hanging off of it. And it literally hits me in the chest when I go off the bank and, and knocks me off the, four, uh, the three-wheeler, and it just tumbles. And, I mean, it's crashing. Handlebars bent, all crashed in. Had that tree not been there, uh, I mean, truly, but God, you know. God saw that seed that was planted a long time before I ever came along, but I needed that tree that day. But I'll never forget... When it hit, I didn't have time to have a theological discussion. Lord, if you're there, Lord, I know you can show up. God, I, I believe you have the power to take care of this situation. All I had time to do was go, oh, God, help me. That's a type of faith. Oh, God, help me. That's what I, I, I screamed it out, and he did. Then there's mustard seed faith. And the Bible talks about that. It's different. It's different. Doesn't happen in a moment. It's different. Happens. It's a pro, there, there's a process. There's a progress to it. Uh, so I want to give you this other picture. This understanding, kind of where where does faith come from? Uh, so picture this lake. Picture you can't get across. You can't get where you. Uh, need to be, you can't go this way or this way, uh, how are you going to do this, and, and, and how do you pray about that? So where does faith come from? And, and I want you to think of it as a boat. And, and so if the only way I can get across is by boat, I need to be praying for a boat. I don't need to be praying to get to the other side. I need to be praying for this boat. And if, if faith is a boat, then then my prayers need to be focusing on that. But oftentimes our prayers are, God, just get me out of this situation. Just get me over there. Lord, uh, actually, God, maybe that is so far, and, and, and I know you could get me over there, but maybe make things peaceful here, and I'm good here, and just make things work out here. But when he's wanting us there, and, and so our prayers kind of change on how we see faith. With that said, when the Bible makes mention of faith, it says it's a gift of God and it's a fruit of the Spirit. It's a gift of God, and it's a fruit of the Spirit. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through, say it with me, faith. And this is not your own doing. You didn't make this boat, okay? You didn't make this. God made this. He crafted it. It says, It is the gift of God. Not a result of works, so that no one may boast. See, your works, my works, our merit is not going to get us across. It's a gift from God. Okay, now, that's, that's seated in your mind. It's also a fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22 through 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, say it with me, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, against such things there is no law. So God doesn't, doesn't give us grace so that we can live any way we want. God doesn't say, hey, I'm going to give you this grace by faith, and so now you can go anywhere you want, you could do anything you want. You could, the, the goal, the objective is to get us to where we need to go through the provision, the gift that God's given us in faith, by faith. So faith comes from God. See, caution, faith only. This is the first point, faith only. Caution, faith only comes from God. It only comes from God. It's a gift of God. It's a, it's a fruit of the Spirit. I mean, suppose we could obtain faith by mixing together all these spiritual qualities in this bowl of life. Suppose you could conjure up faith. You could make it happen. We said faith is powerful. It is. It's so powerful, we'll see in a moment. It can move mountains. Actually, anything is possible for you, as we'll see about faith here in a moment. Well, if you could put all that together, you would have the ability, I would have the ability to do things that God wouldn't want us to do by faith. That's scary to think about, but I think a lot of people are doing that. If I could just put the right components, if I could just have this, if I could just be sincere enough, if I could just make this happen, then by faith I could produce. doesn't work that way, church, because it's a gift of God, and it's a fruit of the Spirit. It's something that comes from spiritual living. 
So faith only comes from God. Look at mustard seed faith. There was a there was this spiritual situation that had occurred, and it's it's pretty drastic, and it was challenging. It's a it's a story that many of you have read, but there's some insight that I think is easy to overlook in this story. Situations tough enough that they're bringing this right to the feet of Jesus. It's in Matthew, Matthew 17, 14 through 19. It says, when they came to the crowd, a, a man came up to him. So this man comes up to Jesus and kneeling before him. So you get the whole picture. He kneels before Jesus. Here's the whole crowd. He kneels before Jesus. And he said, Lord, have mercy on my son. For he has seizures and he suffers terribly. For often he falls into the fire and often into the water. I mean, this condition, our natural response on this condition would be, okay, well, let's, let's pray about these seizures. I mean, that's our natural response. Oh, the condition, is, is he epileptic? Is he, is, 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 did he have a head trauma? Is there something? You know what? We're just, we're just going to put this in God's hands, and we're going to pray that God will take away those seizures and that he won't fall into the water. There won't be any danger to him. There won't be any fire that, that can burn him, and we're just going to pray for that. And I'm telling you, that sounds good. That sounds like faith in operation, but here's the thing. And I believe this bleeds into all of our lives at times. We've assessed the problem as something physical because there's a physical thing we can see with our eyes, but we understand faith takes us beyond what we can see. It takes us into areas that we're tempted to crack the shell, we're, we're, we're tempted to dig up, we're tempted to see progress and all this. Some of our situations we've assessed as physical, and that's how we're praying, when in reality it's very, very spiritual. That doesn't mean that we don't have physical things that we can pray about, that we should pray about, but it just means that there's an insight, there's a further insight sometimes that faith takes us into areas that we've got to operate spiritually in our faith more so than how the physical would dictate so here's the deal. He's got seizures. He's falling down. Water drowning potential, burning potential. God, have mercy on my son. He's in, he, he, he suffers terribly. These are words that he talks about. Verse 16, he tells on the disciples. <laughs> he says, verse 16, and I brought him to your disciples, and they could not heal him. So Jesus, I, I went to <laughs> the people the ones who I thought could help, well, they can, they're no help. Why? It's a spiritual problem. It's not a physical problem. Well, I went to them. They couldn't heal him. It says, verse 17, and Jesus answered, oh, faithless and twisted generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the boy was healed instantly. And then the disciples came to Jesus privately, and they said, why could we not cast it out? I saw some things in this story, and, and I hadn't really considered a lot. Um, what if, by faith, they would have conjured up, mixed the qualities together, had all the right stuff, and this kid was healed of seizures? God, heal him of his seizures. Take away these seizures Lord, we don't need to know why. Just take away the seizures in Jesus' name, amen. And all of a sudden, he doesn't have seizures anymore. What does he still have? A demon. Well, I didn't fix anything. But it did take care of a, a simple symptom, right? I'm not saying that all sickness is from a demon, but I'm just saying this, that there's times I think we've equated our problem as physical, and mm -mm, it's very spiritual. There's a stronghold that needs broken. There's a deliverance that needs to happen. You've equated this fear to something you watched on TV when in reality you've opened up a whole avenue for the enemy to, to have a heyday with your emotions. You know, the Buddhist people are very spiritual, as our missionary told us, but it's an operation of fear. It's, it's fear of the spirit. We don't have to fear the spiritual church. Greater is he who's in us, amen, than he who's in the world. That's the promise of the Father. So your situation yeah, it may be simple. God, I'm just praying you to take care of it. Amen. It may be that simple, but it may be much deeper than that. This situation was. This wasn't just seizures. This wasn't just this boy suffering terribly. There is a demon at work, 
and Jesus was the solution. And by faith, that demon was gone, and he was healed instantly. Something hatched. Something came forth. Something was broken, brought forth by faith. You say, well, how does that have to do with faith? Look at Jesus' response to his disciples because they pulled him to the side. Why, why couldn't we do that, Lord? I mean, we had every great intention. I mean, why couldn't we do that? Look at his response, Matthew 17, 20 through 21. He said to them, because of your little faith. Because of your little faith. And then he goes into the teaching. For truly, I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, that's tiny, look it up. It's tiny. You will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. So there's nothing spectacular about faith as far as size goes. Just a little bit. Just a little bit of faith. Plan it. Plant it in the ground and leave it. Say, give the prayer. Give the situation over to the, the Lord and leave it. Don't just keep coming back and digging it up. Lord, I, I prayed this, but I'm going to check on it real quick. Oh, yeah, nothing's happened. Okay. I'm going to put it back in the ground. A day or two later, uh, Lord, I'm going to check on it again. You know, I've prayed, I've prayed about this, but I'm just going to check on it, just seeing. Not sure if you're hearing me right. God, I really feel that. We dig it up again. Where people have erred is when their mountain fails to move according to their perception. When the, when the seed hasn't produced according to their perception. And the cause is not usually difficult to find. Uh, most of them plant their mustard seed and return to dig it up. Uh, they mistake mustard seed faith for faith in the moment. And you can't do that because there's two different types of faith. How many times after planting a seed of expectation will we return shortly to examine it, worry over it, dig it up, hold it, help it along. And the change is not what we expected or exactly how we pictured it. It's appearing looks as though nothing is happening. You ever prayed that? I, I prayed, Lord, and it seems like nothing's happening. But if you planted a seed, you're not going to see what's happening. Yeah, but Lord, I just, like, when? When's it going to come forth? When it's ready. Well, when is that? It's just like a little kid going, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? And every parent loves that. God, is it, is it are you going to do it this way? How are you going to do this? Lord, okay, so I'm going to pray to you again, God, about this situation, about this issue. Hey, Lord, I'm going to ask, I'm going to, I, I just really, can I just, can I just dig it up a little? I just want to see where we're at right now. Is it, is it developing roots? Is it, where's it at in it? If you could just let me know that, then then I won't have to have faith. <laughs> and that doesn't work. So how many times after planting the seed of expectation, we return to pull it up? Caution, secondly, digging up a seed of faith accepts defeat when victory is working. It's a deep one. Caution, digging up a seed of faith accepts defeat when victory is working. I mean, maybe God's working and you keep pulling it up. You keep dismissing the potential of faith. It would be like approaching the boat, the gift that God's given you to get you where you need to go and going, well, I just, okay, Lord, okay, I see this boat. You know how I am. Um, do you have a bigger boat? You have a different cushion I could sit on? Maybe a life jacket. I need a life jacket because that is the law, Lord, you know, and this boat is of size and I've got to have a life jacket because I would, it's not that I would feel better. I just think everybody else would feel better if I had a life jacket because that would be a great flotation device because if this boat gets out there of what you provided and it sinks, then at least I have plan B to get me back to, okay, I love you, Lord. And we have those conversations, don't we? Yeah, you guys are looking at me like, no, that's just you. No. And he provides and we trust him. But God, that boat looks rickety. Will that boat float? Will that boat get me where I need to go? See, digging up a seed of faith, God, I planted this seed. I put it in the ground. It's, it's deep, and I, I, I even fertilized it, Lord. And I, 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 I really had great intentions over this, and, and I've sheltered it. And, and, I've, and I'm, where's it at right now? Like, how's, how are things going down there? Can I just check? and see, Can you just reveal to me? Can you just, if we dig it up, 
And digging up a seed of faith accepts defeat when victory is working. See, with faith, there's many times, uh, there may be times where it seems we do not know a lot of what it seems we feel we should know. And faith, by sheer nature, presents us in situations that we can't know everything because it's in God's hands. There was a salesman, uh, he's a pretty good salesman, and he's driving around, he's in a rural area uh, of of, of the country, and he doesn't have a phone signal, and he's trying to find this place, can't find it, uh, going up, down little country lanes, all this. He sees this kid on the side of the road, and he just pulls over, and he goes, hey, excuse me, I don't mean to startle you or anything, but he goes, I, um, I seem to be a little bit lost. He said, uh, um, are you from around here? And he, yeah, yeah. He goes, okay. He said, uh, do you know where, like, the courthouse is? And no. He said, okay, uh, do you know, there's a, there's a big bank, I think it's called First National Bank. Do you know where First National Bank is? He said, uh, nope. He goes, he goes, okay, do you know where Main Street is? Nope. Salesman's frustrated. He goes, okay, what do you know? And the little boy, he looks up the, the street just a, a little bit, and he sees his house and his brothers and sisters out there in the front yard playing. And he goes, well, I know I ain't lost. <laughs> Here's what's awesome. So there's a lot of things we don't know in areas of faith. There's a lot of things that you're not going to be able to know. But I can tell you this, if we have faith in Christ, we aren't lost. We aren't lost. The Apostle Paul wrote this. He said, uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 12 through 13, he says, uh, For now we see in a mirror dimly. Some translations of Scripture will say, Now we see in a glass darkly. But he follows it up, he says, but then, later on, we'll see face to face. Right now, right now, the best we got is in a, is in a mirror, uh, in this mirror dimly or in a glass darkly. But then, in the future, coming up, we'll see face to face. It'll all make sense. It'll all come together. He says, now I know in part. He says, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now, faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. What's interesting is that when you look into Hebrews, uh, the book of Hebrews in Scripture, and it gives a definition of faith, it says faith is a, it is a substance of things hoped for. That hope, hope is an attachment to faith. It, it, it gives us a hope. So faith and hope are closely connected, and they're boundaried with love. These three remain, faith, hope, and love. The greatest is love, that boundary that holds it all together. Uh, last caution is this, caution. In regards to faith and progress, just because you have unanswered questions doesn't mean you cannot have strong faith. Just because you have unanswered questions doesn't mean you cannot have strong faith. I think sometimes we have questions we want God to answer, and until those are answered, we're not sure we're going to trust him. God, I'll get in the boat if you'll just reveal to me how long this trip's going to take. God, I'll, I'll plant this seed and leave it in the ground if you'll give me how long or the process, or a play-by-play, -play, or what you're actually praying is, God, I'll do this as long as I don't have to have faith. Remember, faith's a gift. Faith's an outcome. It's a fruit of the Spirit. So you may have unanswered questions, but that's no excuse. It doesn't mean you cannot have strong faith. I, I want to close with this. The Apostle Paul, he also wrote in 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 10. He said this. He said, we are afflicted in every way. Some of you relate with this, but not crushed. He said, perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. I mean, there's this, this understanding. There's always going to be stuff going on. There's always going to be things to cause us to stumble or question or fear, but we don't have to. The best is yet to come, church. 
Best is yet to come. We have before us a celebration of communion, which reminds us, yeah, God did something back here. It is awesome. And God's doing something right now, and it's powerful. But hey, church, the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. All those seeds of faith, when they come forth, the best is yet to come. I love the illustration, what the missionary used is 50 years later, goes under the house, pulls this out, that God had planted a seed, but it took 50 years to germinate. It took 50 years to come forth. I don't know what you've planted. I don't know what you're dealing with. Maybe it's something that you've assessed that it's a simple physical fix, when in reality, it's a very, very much a spiritual principality that needs broken. God, if you would just heal of this, everything would be okay. Hmm. Maybe, but you may still very much have the root of your problem still there. See, God has a way by faith of dealing with roots. God, if you would just, Lord, I see what you provided, but if you would do it differently or if you would assure or, God, if you would put a sail, actually a motorboat, actually just get me over there. I don't want to mess with the whole process of this. Lord, I know that you're capable to get me where I need to be. Just, just get me there. And you could take that through so many different contexts financially your job, provisions, trust, family. God, if you would have just given me this spouse. God, if my kids would just do this. God, I just really think that if you could make this happen, then all this situation would be taken care of. The truth is, again, I realize I'm, I'm going into an area that sometimes people will push back from. Can God heal your seizure in the spiritual realm? Yeah. But he truly wants to go to the root of the issue at the spiritual depths of it and tear out strongholds. That's what he wants to do. Because the truth is, is when the strongholds are tore out, when deliverance is brought forth, when what only Jesus can do through faith is revealed, comes forth, all the physical stuff's taken care of. You don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear. You don't have to worry about anything. It's all taken care of. See, caution, faith, and progress. Don't dig it up. Don't crack it open. Use what God gives you. Be faithful with what he gives you. See, someday when we see Christ, everything will be clear. Everything will be clear. Meanwhile, we can relax knowing in faith, God is in control. I mean, that's, it, it's truly, faith is truly that simple. Stop digging up your seed of faith. If you've, if you've prayed and you've presented your request to God, then listen to what he's saying. He said, well, he's not saying anything. May not be anything to say right now. Well, yeah, I just wish he would say something. I just wish he would tell me how things are going. I put it in his hands. I, I planted that seed. I got in the boat. Are we there yet? <laughs> I would get in the boat if he would tell me what the plan is. How many days this is going to, how many weeks, how many years? Is there going to be waves? Is there going to be a storm? If it, once he tells me that, then I'm good to get in the boat. And we miss it. Go toward where he's working. Hey, I don't know. Maybe it's Laos. <laughs> commit to what he's doing, come back to where he's leading, and we have a purpose and direction in this life, but it only comes by faith through him, by faith in him. I'm going to ask you to stand if you would. I, there's two questions that I want you to wrestle with. There's two questions I don't want you to just wrestle with today. I don't want you to just wrestle at this time. I don't want you to just take these two questions and this week, this is going to be on your fridge, and then it's going to come down. These are two questions we need to wrestle with the rest of our lives. And here it is. Where are you planting seeds of faith? And secondly, where are you digging them up? Where are you planting seeds of faith and where are you digging them up? Because those are the only two areas that have any potential for growth in your life.
in the area of faith. See, if I don't plant, I have absolutely no opportunity for spiritual faith to grow. I have no opportunity for that if I don't plant it. And if I keep digging it up once I plant it, I have no opportunity for spiritual growth. So where are you planting seeds of faith? And where are you digging it up? In your marriage that's struggling, where are you planting seeds of faith and where are you digging it up? In your job, where are you planting seeds of faith and where are you digging it up? In your kids, where are you planting seeds of faith and where are you digging it up? In your church, where are you planting seeds of faith and where are you digging it up? I mean, we can go down the line. Where are you planting seeds of faith and where are you digging it up? Those two areas tell the whole story. Tell the whole story of your life spiritually. What God has provided, that's all you can be faithful with. Take that into any area of your life. What God can do with the seed, it's only what God can do. You can't do it. You can't force it. We have baby dedications, and oftentimes we have that, that uh, rose bud. And I tell the parents, and it's very much an aspect of faith. You can't force it open. You can't force it to happen. You can just nurture it. Faith is very much the same way. You just nurture it. Lord, I... I leave it in your hands. God, I, I plant the seed. Now you do the work. God, I, I, I see what you provided. I'm just going to be faithful with that. Lord, I love you. God, whatever comes, I trust you. That's how faith grows in our life. Caution, faith, and progress. If we don't plant, we cannot experience growth. And if we dig it up, same result. Where are you planting seeds of faith? And where are you digging them up?